Merry Christmas, everybody. Hey, man, it's Pastor Brad here. I want to thank you so much for for tuning in, for clicking on this, uh, for, for turning this on, spending a few minutes with me this Christmas season. Welcome to this very special One Holy Night Christmas podcast. This podcast is going to feature the music of my album, One Holy Night. Ten songs that that tell the Christmas story as recorded in the Gospels of the New Testament. Wherever you are, let me encourage you to get comfortable and settle in for what I hope will be an inspirational journey through the Gospel accounts about the birth of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. We'll embark on this hard rock Christmas journey in just a moment, but first, let me encourage you, if you haven't already, to reach out and connect with me online. There are three basic places you can connect with me online. First is Facebook. I'd kind of consider this the the lightest place to connect with me. Uh, I post several things on there a month. Uh, you'll, You'll get basic updates on my music projects. I don't post a lot of teaching on there. Um, but you can definitely private message me, and you'll you'll be able to you'll be kept up on like my projects when a new album comes out, those kind of things. And it's a great way to just kind of interact. But you can look for me on Facebook. Just look up Pastor Brad Rocks, and you'll find me. Number two, YouTube. This is an awesome place to connect with me. I'm super active on YouTube. I have three, sometimes four videos coming out every single week. Every Friday, I put out a new Pastor Brad style 80s metal related video. I put all of my music and all of my teaching up there. I love to teach the Word of God. So if you're hungry to get rocked up and and, and study the Word of God, YouTube is the place to connect with me. And again, just put in the search bar, Pastor Brad Rocks, and you'll find my channel. And a third and really special way to connect with me is to just go to my home online, the place that I've called home uh, ever since 2003 when I first started the Pastor Brad Rocks ministry, guitarjams.net. The word guitar, the word jams.net. There's no spaces and there's no caps, right? Just guitarjams.net. There's all kinds of info about the ministry and my music on that website. But also there's a place to sign up for the newsletter. And when you sign up for the newsletter, you're going to get all kinds of free gifts. You're going to get some tools that will really help you with your devotional life. And you're going to get a ton of free Pastor Brad music. So check it out. And then every week or so, I will uh, drop you a line and let you know what's going on. And we can interact. And I always send those emails out on Fridays. Okay, man, let's do it. It all took place a very long time ago in the ancient holy land of Israel on one very special holy night. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped or clung to or used for his own advantage. But he made himself nothing. taking the very nature of a servant and being found in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus Christ every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Man broke his heart, 
so he let it go. In very nature, God, he let go of equality. He poured out his heart and was born here for you and me. Broken and poured out for all mankind. Love on display, offering sight to the blind. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, to a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words, and she wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son. And you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. 
the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. Virgin Lord, please
the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father full of grace and truth. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming into the world and even now is already in the world. Selected passages from the prophet Isaiah, Paul's letter to the Galatians, and the writings of the Apostle John. This is how the birth of the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to a man named Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law 
and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take her home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All of this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. got ready and hurried off to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. The Gospel of Luke, 
chapter 1, verses 39 through In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken among the entire Roman world. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his town to register. So Joseph also went up from Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and she placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. The Gospel of Luke, chapter two, verses one through seven.
and there were shepherds living in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel of the Lord said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. The shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. And so they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all of these things and pondered them in her heart. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 through 19. Favor fall upon us. 
Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who's been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all of the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd his people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly, and he found out from them the exact time that the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. Coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and they worshipped him. And then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another way. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Jesus was born 
Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all of the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time that he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping in great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted, because they are no more. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 16 through 18. Jesus replied, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they're born again. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. To all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. All of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. 
We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death. In order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Selected passages from the Gospel of John and the Apostle Paul's letter to the Romans. Thank you so much for joining me for this very special 
Christmas podcast. I hope it's been a blessing to you, man. I hope that Jesus has been born in you. I hope you know him as your Lord and Savior. If you ever have any questions about that, never hesitate to reach out to me at pastorbrad at AOL.com. Or if you if you like the Pastor Brad page, you can you can message me over there or you know just reach out to me. If you type in Pastor Brad Rocks or Pastor Brad Christian 80s Metal or 80s Christian Metal, whatever, uh, in Google, you'll find me. Reach out to me, man. I'd love to help you grow in Christ any way I can. Merry Christmas. May God bless you. May he give you a wonderful new year. I hope you'll come back every Christmas and listen to this podcast again and again. May it be a blessing to you, man. Keep your eyes on Jesus. God bless. Bye-bye.